Okay, I think we are live today. Hello. <laughs> it's Friday. We are going to paint a beta fish, which ought, ought to be a lot of fun. We're going to draw it together, so no worries. I'm here with Sarah. Hello, everyone. And she will be taking your questions, comments, whatever. You guys can chit chat with each other in the chat. Um, but if you do have a question for me pertaining to what we're doing here today, then uh, just type it in all caps so she'll catch it and can ask me. We're gonna be using a variety of supplies from our sponsor, jerrysautorama.com. Um, we're gonna use some of the Turner watercolors that we use most weeks. We'll be using the, tur the uh, turquoise blue and also some of the rose red, like magenta color. You can use whatever supplies you have at home though. Don't feel like you have to have exactly what I have. I'm using two watercolor pencils and these are the ink tense pencils and I like these because um, once you sketch and you add water to them they actually become permanent so you can wash over them and not worry about those colors lifting. The two colors I'm using here are um, bright blue number 1000 and spring green number 1550 and then we're going to also finish up with some uh, with oh we're also using yellow ochre of the paints forgot about that uh, then we're going to finish up with some wax base colored pencils and these are the Soho Urban Artist pencils from Jerry'sArtorama.com these are new to me um, I kind of like them they're um, they're a lot drier than like a Prismacolor but the leads don't break they have high pigment low wax um, concentration so you know you're getting mostly pigment they don't wear down as quickly and uh, and they work really well on this they may have a little kind of scratchy noise when I'm coloring with them and that might bug some of you guys so I'm just warning you now in case we get to that point and it's kind of bugging you the uh, reference photo is uh, by a talented photographer Hannah I can't remember her last name from paint my photo but it is linked below with her name uh, in the video description so you can check that out we are going to begin on a piece of 140 pound arches watercolor paper again use whatever brand you have it doesn't really matter and we're going to start sketching with the blue ink tense pencil and you can use a watercolor pencil if you don't have the ink tense so I'm going to start with uh, the fish's head and I'm going to kind of make an oval and the size of this is roughly five by seven I would say so if you're if you want to work on a watercolor greeting card that would be ideal for this as well. I like to work on those sometimes because they're very affordable and then you don't need to frame them. So what I have here is kind of like a leaf or a teardrop shape kind of pointing to the to the uh, upper left hand corner of the paper and then I am going to put this top fin up just give it a ruffly edge and swoop it back down. Then I'm gonna get the side fin and this is such a cool um, angle I think that the photographer captured the betta fish from I just thought it was so interesting and I had a request for a betta fish uh, a couple requests actually so I thought this is this would be really fun to do and it's actually a very easy tutorial so then I'm going to go over here and do the other the other fin on the other side uh, we do have our first question okay uh, Valerie Connell Hello, Do Valerie. We know the light fast info on the Soho pencils. Extremely light fast. That's another thing I really like about them. Very light fast. Uh, there's a link in the video description. You can head over there. Uh, they do have some video resources on that. Um, and all the information that you want will be right there. So you can check out. And the set of 72 is on sale for $69 Ooh. or 63, 60 something. And it's regular 162. So, Ooh, um, so like it's a heck over half off. I know it's a heck of a deal. So, yeah. so of course you can't use any other further discounts with that, but, uh, but no. yeah, somebody it is Mother's Day. Mother's Day is coming up. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Gracie Shack one. Oh hey Gracie. Um, uh, she has the Spectrum Noir set pencils. She doesn't have many watercolor pencils. Are the Spectrum Noir watercolor pencils worth buying? Um, I like them. They are. Um, so if you're if you're trying to th decide to say between those and the ink tents, the ink tents once you wash over them with water and let them dry, they're permanent. Like um, like if you were using India ink, the uh, Aqua blends after you've washed over them, you can go back in later and lift up the color just like you can a watercolor. So think about what you want as far as um, as far as workability and um, and go from there. And you could just buy like one one of the sets of the of the, like, the 24 aqua blends see if you like them and then um, buy a few ink tents if you want to just kind of fill in your collection so you don't have it doesn't have to be all one or, or the other they all work well together now I just want to fill that in a little bit more there I'm gonna put the eyeball 
and then I'm just going to get the mouth kind of like a, a frown shape and just kind of swoop that whole shape right back there like that. Uh, Rodrigo Paez, what is the correct and safe way to apply, uh oh, hang on, bumped, bumped, bumped up, uh, apply a pastel fixative? Um, you generally just want to, I would lay down like maybe a piece of newspaper and put the painting on top and you want to be about eight to 12 inches away and you, I, I would start, I would move, I move my hand when I apply it. So I would start like, if I, this is what I wanted to spray, I would start spraying over here and move my arm back and forth. So you get just a light coat at about eight inches away in a well ventilated area. And I'm just adding a little bit of this pigment in here. Unless you're looking for an interesting afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> oh. Which we're not recommending. <laughs> you're not condoning that. No, no, no. I'm just saying we're all adults here. We can make our own decisions. That's a thing, though. There could. This is vacation week. There could be kids oh, here. So. <laughs> that's right. I, forget. I don't have kids, so I forget about vacation weeks. Yeah, well, they, and they, you know what? You can't even buy, like... In Maine, anyway, miners can't buy spray aerosol products. I think oh, well, maybe really? they might be able to buy hairspray, but they can't buy spray paint or any of those hmm. spray things. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is grab a brush, and we're going to look at a different brush today because I think this is one of the most useful brushes that a watercolorist can have, especially if you're limited on space and money. This is a number six cat's tongue brush by Princeton, and different brands make them, and, and I think most of them are pretty darn good. Um, this is synthetic. It's a little bit firmer than the, um, the Mimics we've been using, but the reason I want to use this is I like it with pencil because I can really um, kick up that dry pigment a lot easier. This is a filbert or cat's tongue shape, meaning it's a, the ferrule's flat, but the bristles are tapered. So you kind of have the use of a flat and a round brush in one brush. So it's very useful. And when I've wet this brush, it comes to a nice fine point. So I can get into all the details from the little highlights in the eye, um, you know, to the thin, like these thin little wispy, uh, fins. So what I'm doing is just kind of liquefying my pigment. I haven't added any watercolor. This is just what was from the um, pencil. And that's something I like about the Inktense pencils is they have so much pigment and they're just so vibrant. The only thing I, the thing I don't like about the Inktense though, their light fast rating is not great. So I do want to mention that the light fast rating on this, the uh, aqua blends that uh, Gracie was asking about is extremely good. So um Keep that in mind. We're going to be adding watercolor and and the Soho pencils to it. So I think all in all, averaged out, we're going to be all right. But, you know, just to let you know, that's important stuff, especially if you're, you know, you're painting artworks that you want to be permanent. I'm going to add a little bit of the turquoise from the, um, from the Turner paint line here. It's a softer color. It's actually, um, it's slightly opaque, I think. This is, uh, it almost reminds me also of a cerulean blue. Some cerulean blues also have this uh, this color, especially if you're using like a, a Chinese painting set. They have that same tone to it. I'll go over here and do this. I want to say wing, but it's a fin, <laughs> but it's so spread out. It looks like a wing. I've had several beta fishes, fish in my life. I think we all have. Yeah. Well, one once I, I got one in college and I, I just remember like I used to have a little uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse. And I remember putting the fishbowl in the little console, and it was a stick shift too, so every time I'd go to gear, I was so afraid that I was going to like knock it over, knock it over. but it was like Christmas break, and I was going home to visit visit my parents, that poor fish had a had Toad's Wild Ride to to my hometown, Shina, Maine, I'm telling you. And, uh, and so, you know, they only live a couple of years, and so that one met its maker a few years later, mm. and, uh, and then somebody gave me a, a peace lily, and do you remember like probably about 15 years ago, the, there was a big trend of like fish doing the, like, they would do the arrangements and they would put yes. fish in the vase. And mm -hmm. I remember being so like upset with like, I was upset with flower shops that they went, I'm like, that's, they shouldn't be putting fish in plants. It's not, it's too much of a responsibility to just, just give somebody, you know, it's, I was very well, upset about and that. They're not, it's, the plants aren't good because the roots and stuff aren't good for them to eat. Yeah, and that was kind of ridiculous, too. I'm like, why would they do that? And so then I had that fish for a couple of years, you know. It's like, you can't expect somebody to take on that responsibility when people are just flushing the fish or something after the... Flowers, the yeah. plant goes away. Yeah, so that was... I found that to be very troubling. I'm glad that trend is uh, over. Is over. 
Um, let's see, Crafty Crater. Hi, Lindsay, what watercolor do you suggest for a medium type watercolor painter? A travel set, and I have a Hobby Lobby. So anything from there? I'm not really that familiar with what Hobby Lobby carries because I don't shop there, but um, would they carry like a Cotman? I think? think I I'm trying to, I go in there occasionally and I believe they have I know they have some I mean major brands but I can't remember what you know like the Royal Langnicker and I don't know no oh, yeah Royal Langnickel is a nice reliable brand Cotman they might have Cotman I'm trying to I'm trying I like it's been a while since I've been yeah. there Koi, they probably have, if they have Koi, that's, um, I would do Cotman over Koi, but, because Koi is a little more opaque, just depending on what you want. Oh, and I'm just putting a little magenta, or, you know, permanent rose, whatever you're using for your pinkish red, go ahead and just put some of that, some touches of that here and there in some of the wet paint. Yeah, I would think any of those are going to be good. Reeves is actually decent, too. It's a very, um, inexpensive... I'm going to see if I still have some of that. Somebody asked me for a review on that the other day, but, you know, that's a nice, reliable brand and it's great for kids because it's non-toxic. Adia Kinsara, I apologize if I said your name wrong. What brand of watercolor do you use and or prefer for students? Um, it depends on the age. If it's a child, um, I would say Reeves because I know there's no toxic chemicals in there. <laughs> Um, as I would say for like adults, if you're, if you're kind of just dabbling and you're not sure how serious you want to get about it, I would say Cotman because it's, the light fast is good, it's reliable. Um, the Royal Magnicals are also good. They're about the same as a Cotman. Um, they might be a little trickier to find. I know a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, major shops will sell Cotman. Um, and, and you can get those in like little kits with, uh, like 12 colors or whatever. Um, there's a lot of really good brands out there. If you're looking more on the pro side, I really like M. Graham and Company. I like these Turners. Um, M. Graham is your favorite watercolor brand. M. Graham is my favorite. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, pretty much what I go for. While that's drying, I'm going to sketch in some, like, seaweed here, and I'm just going to kind of make it up. There is some kind of seaweed in the, uh, reference photo, but I'm kind of just looking also to fill the design space here. Uh, Sarah Alexander, how do you layer colors? Um, in watercolor, to layer, you want to make sure the first layer, the first colors are dry, and then go on over it. Otherwise, you'll end up with some <clears throat> blooms and some, like, roughly hard edges. And that's called glazing. All right. So I'm going to hit this really quick. Actually, let me call, color the eyeball in mole before I do that with my blue. And with the intense pencils, I like to sharpen them with a knife and remove just the wood because I, I don't want to waste any of that pigment. And I don't tend to want to sharpen them to a point for detail. For me, I would much prefer to save the pigment and um, just kind of have it, have it like that. And I also prefer the pencils over the blocks. And I don't think you need both if you're, um, you know, I think, what, I think the pencils are a lot more versatile and you can pick up uh, the color from the tip with the... Uh, with your brush, so I got the blocks. I'm gonna be using them in a workshop this summer. They're fun, especially if you like mixed media, but if you're trying to decide between the two, I would definitely go with the pencils. Um, just thinking, well, I think, you know what, let's paint these uh, the seaweed in too while we're at it. So let's just see how much pigment we get if we just kind of wet our lines. It's quite a bit there, even just on the lines. So you can imagine if you were a rubber stamper and you used the watercolor pencils to just kind of like outline something, you know, you'd probably just have enough to do a perfect little uh, blended. What did you do? We're streaming. We're okay. back. We're back. Yay. Right. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Okay. So. Okay. It's back. Yay. Yay. We're back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for doing the happy stream dance, guys. I'm sure Thank somebody you. was out there. Thank you. And 
we miss a bunch of questions, so I'm going to try and get as caught <laughs> okay. up as possible. So bear with me and thank you for your patience. Thanks for letting us know because I, well, I guess you have the, do you have, do you have, well, I was, I was getting caught up on the chat and then I was like, wait a minute, people are saying it's frozen and then it showed frozen on my screen. I wasn't looking at the, oh, at yeah. the video streaming yeah. on my side. So, okay. So you just want a combination of yellow ochre and sap green for the little, um, little seaweed here and then we're going to dry this and do some background but you can ask questions while i'm drawing because yes i'm getting caught up to where i was All okay right. um lindsay uh, muralist still muralist l lindsay have you ever used mission gold watercolors are they any good I haven't used them, but I think they're really good because um, I've seen quite a few reviews of them. Uh, the Mind of Watercolor has done a review, Prairie Paper Ink has done one, and I believe um, Christina Warner has done one as well, and they all gave them really excellent reviews. And from the tutorials I've seen, they're gorgeous. And they're a pretty good buy, I think, over on Amazon. I think that they're like regular $267 on sale for like 67 or something like that. Um, for like 30 colors or 36 colors which is a lot i have heard their mixes rather than pure colors a lot of them so you know you want to just keep that in mind but the colors looked really vibrant from what i could see um you know i, I do a little research make sure the light fast is good but i think you're probably they're probably decent uh joanne ford which do you prefer to use color pencils or tubes or cakes it depends on the project. I like them all. Um, if I'm doing something large, I want the like probably tube colors, but I like to squeeze them into my palette and let them dry. Um, for colored pencils, or those are great for portability um, and for like rubber stamping projects. I'm gonna spritz this with um, just my spray bottle of water, and then I'm going to um, do some of this turquoise color. I'm just gonna start off by doing some kind of like wavy shapes. And uh, the ink tense is not going to move. Some of the other watercolor stuff that I have there might move a little bit, but since I heat set it, that really minimizes it as well. And I just like to kind of do this first just to give it a little bit of uh, movement. Then I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre. And I've got a lot of water in this. You don't want the, the paint like full strength. I've got lots and lots of water. I just want it kind of like, you know, in a fishbowl, you've got the light kind of going through the glass and I just want to kind of get that. And I'm going to do a little more blue on the bottom and maybe a little bit of green, I'm probably mix them together actually, but a little bit less water just so I have a little bit more weight on the bottom of this. And then if you've got a lot of puddles on the side, just dry your brush off. And this is the um, Mimic uh, Faux Squirrel brush from Jerry's Artorama. And these are really thirsty. They soak up a lot of color. And I'm just going to soak up the extra color so I don't get a backwash or bloom on the side. You could do that with a paper towel if your brush isn't very thirsty. Just be careful not to leave um, like puffy clouds on the side. And then we're going to heat it again to set that color. And you can leave a little bits of white sparkle here and there if you want to. Or if you don't like that, just go in with a, with your brush and just spread your paint around. Or fill it in if you've covered it all up. All right, so if you have any questions, I will dry it and answer questions. Make sure Chewie doesn't eat the chickens. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Michelle Bowles, can you repeat what you said about using watercolor with rubber stamping? That's when the bead died. Oh, okay. I think I was probably talking about, I was probably sketching in the weeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I sketched in the weeds with a green ink tense pencil, which is a type of like, it's, it's a water soluble pencil. Um, and just with the amount of pigment that I laid down with a sketch, I was able to pull in a, like a nice natural soft shadow that's darker at the edges and lighter in the middle, kind of like the effect that we like to get with Copic markers, but this is a lot easier. Just uh, kind of outline your images just inside your stamp lines and then use a damp brush to pull the color inwards and you'll get that nice kind of rouged effect. And that's with uh, any watercolor pencil that we'll work with. Uh, Aaron Clems, what would be the best brushes for an intermediate watercolorist? Thanks, Lindsay. 
Um, I really like the Mimic uh, Kalinskis and the Mimic Squirrels, but I think Intermediate, I would go with the Kalinskis because they're not quite as thirsty. I also like Royal Aqualon, and I also like Prince de Neptune. Uh, the Neptune and the Mimics are very similar to each other. It just depends on, you know, your brand preference. There we go. And I dried the back side of this too. It just keeps it from, um, from warping so much. It just kind of evens it out a little bit. Now we're going to go in and do some more details on the fish. And we're going to be using that uh, cat's tongue brush I was talking about earlier. And I'm going to use that just like it's a cake of color. Just loading up. Now I'm loading it up here so you can see it actually like, should, should go a little bit to the side so I don't uh, drip, on. drip on there. Um, and my brush is pretty wet so I'm actually going to just blot it um, on my paper towel just so I don't have too much water on there. And then I'm going to go in and start adding some shadows. And see I can use the tip of the brush. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. I can use the tip of the brush and get a lot of detail. Or I can, if I need to fill in a large area, I can use the the body of the brush or the belly of the brush and just push it a little bit more and get more coverage. So a lot of versatility in this brush. Uh, Miriam Pastori, there's something I don't understand. If you buy two watercolors and then squeeze them out and let them dry, what's the difference between tubes and cakes? There really isn't any except you have more versatility um, in tube colors. <laughs> Manufacturers will make more colors available in tubes and they seem to be a little bit more economical um, like a half pan like milliliter to milliliter it seems like you get a little bit more from tubes um, but the versatility is that if you want to do a huge background and you don't and you want to work with it wet then you have the versatility to use the paints both ways and Sarah will be back in a second she's off uh, corralling her dog away from the chickens at the moment she's eating chicken poop oh gross <laughs> yucky we'll eat a breakfast but boy oh boy that chicken poop the is delicacy mm. gross <laughs> <laughs> Uh, run flash run 14 do you like the koi watercolors um you know I have the travel set of I think it's 24 or 18 I'm not sure um, I got it like a year and a half ago so or maybe even two years ago I can't remember they, they have a bigger set now whichever is like not the the new biggest one um, and I like them they're just a little bit more opaque they're actually a very much like the um, new Prima watercolors I would say they're almost like the exact same thing um, but I, I like them fine. They're, I, I usually just prefer a more transparent watercolor is all. Uh, JC Gabori, I am torn between buying a palette that is built to use pans or just has wells for paint because I'm still establishing my collection of two paints. Any advice? Your, your pans, your palettes like this are going to be more versatile because you can put whatever tubes you want in there. Um... And for some reason, the little, the little uh, palettes, the empty palettes for pans are way more expensive than they ought to be. I don't know why they're... I think you'd, it'd be cheaper for you to buy a set of the Prima paints that have the little um, half pan palettes and just to go out and buy the palette on its own. Uh, Lal Panka Jackshan Gurulal. I apologize. Oh my, I'm a... sure I butchered that name. How do you feel about Faber Castell Oil Pastel? Faber Castell, I'm trying to think if I used their oil. I'm not sure if I've used their oil pastels. Um, I really haven't had any oil pastels that I could complain about, honestly. Um, I'm sure they're fine. Faber Castell usually makes decent stuff. Um, I don't know how expensive they are or anything, but I know their their uh, soft pastels are pretty affordable, and I like those a lot. The set, the half stick set of 72 I just used in a tutorial the other day, and um, they're a really great value. But I haven't tried the oil pastels, I don't think. Unless they came in a kit of something and I've forgotten. Uh, Gracie Shack one do you recommend any kind of projects that are watercolor based for Yupo paper? I haven't used Yupo paper yet. I would play with that because it's, it's a very unusual type of paper. So um, you might find that you may find it a little um, hard to control at first. So I would just, just practice with it and see what you think. And I wouldn't try to like complete a project right on your first go, I would just kind of get used to it. So I, and you can rinse it off and start again if you make a mistake. So don't feel like, you know, you're ruining a big sheet of paper or anything. Just play with it and see what you think about it. All right, I'm gonna grab a little magenta 
and add some glazing over with the magenta in different areas. Uh, Serena Griffith, how can you sharpen a watercolor pencil without it breaking? My pencils always break after sharpening them. For my, my ink tents, I use a, um, a like an exacto knife or a box cutter or something and just cut away the wood. If your pencils keep breaking, it could be that the lead is broken on the inside and that is, that's a real bummer because it's hard to fix with the watercolor pencils. With the um, wax pencils, you can microwave them or heat them with a heating pad or something and get them to kind of behave, kind of melt and fuse back together. Um, but with the watercolor pencils, they're not as waxy, so I don't think that method will necessarily work. So yeah, so I have I have some watercolor pencils. The ones I use in my kids' class that do that all the time is so frustrating. But it's so it's hard with kids um, because they don't mean to. They're you know they'll drop them off the table or they'll go to pass one to a friend and they'll slide it across the table and it will fall. And you know it's kind of nature of the beast. It's hard to to teach a big group of kids to be careful with the with the pencils. So I do have some that just like break as soon as I sharpen them. So and it's a case of the lead being broken on the inside. But you know I, I sharpen them with a knife. That'll make them less likely to break. And just, you know, try to take care of them so they don't get dropped or anything. That's probably the best advice. And if, if worse comes to worse, take the pencil lead and put it in a palette and spray it with water and use it as paint. Because, you know, it's probably still, you know, that it's still good product. You just need to, you're going to have to find a different way to use it if you want to use it. And I'm just adding a little more turquoise to this top. Uh, fin there because it just seems a little blah. I'm going to add a little bit over here too. And then we're going to move on to some colored pencil techniques as soon as this is dry. So don't worry if you don't have it perfect, if you don't have like a, all your adjustments just where you want them, um, we're going to do more. So that's a great thing about colored pencil is that you can minutely adjust and it doesn't take a long time. Like if you did a colored pencil, piece on its own that can take a long time but when you're adjusting watercolor you've got a lot of the work done you're just doing small changes I also wanted to give the fish some bubbles and you don't have to do this I'll show you this is it without bubbles and I'll show you this one here this is with bubbles so you can decide if it's for you or not and if you have a, a template like a circle template go ahead and trace them um, I don't have one here right off the right right now so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing it and I'm drawing with my ink tents, but I am going really light because otherwise I'm going to get way more color than I want. Uh, Leanne, what is glazing? It's putting transparent layers over um, established layers. So it's just doing a trans semi-transparent layers. So you're just doing what you're doing. Um, you know, you've let this dry and then you've gone over it again with another color. All right, so I put five bubbles there. And I don't want my brush too wet, so I'm just kind of like pinching off the extra water. And then um, I'm actually going to turn this a little bit. Always uh, turn your paper if you feel like it's uh, not comfortable for you to use. And I'm just being careful that I keep that round shape. And I'm going to do all of the uh, left hand sides of the bubbles and I'll turn my paper and do all the right hand sides. And I like how you get that nice uh, darker color on the edge that makes it look a little bit more like a bubble. If your brush is too wet, blot it off. Don't try to force it to accept the, the water. Uh, Katrina, I have a lot of mineral in my water. Is that bad for using watercolor? Oh no, we've got very hard water here. It shouldn't hurt it. <clears throat> I mean, I paint with pond water sometimes. It's <laughs> it just adds a little something extra. Adds a little flair. Adds a little local color. That's right. <laughs> I mean, while that's still wet, I'm going to drop in some watery magenta. Because any color that I've used here is, uh, is fair game because the bubbles will reflect. And don't worry if it's too much color. We can blot it when we're all done adding color. I'm going to do a little yellow ochre. Chewy outside. She needs to be inside. Yeah, she's got to be watched. She can't be outside by herself. She's got to be inside. Okay. 
Oh, we've got the neighborhood convenient converging on the house now. Sweet. <laughs> And I think I'll add a little bit of that green in there just because it's there in our painting. It's another great way to tie all of these colors into each other. And I feel like I want to maybe kick up, well, let's try blotting real quick just to lighten up some of that. I just feel like that outline's a little too dark. I'm just going to go in and scrub a little bit. And we'll be also refining this with a colored pencil, so don't worry if it doesn't look bubbly enough to you. We'll, we'll be uh, adjusting that. And things always look better the next day, so don't, don't overly judge your painting when you're working on it. Give it some time. You have a cup of tea. Come back. Take a look at it. All right, let's see. Our fish is still damp, so we're going to blast it. Do we have any, any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, Serena uh, Griffith, does Jerry's ship worldwide? I'm thinking they use a freight forwarding service, but um, I am not sure if you um, contact their customer service, they can, and ask to be forwarded to their their shipping department, they can give you that information. And I would check that out before, you know, going through and finding a bunch of things you want, you know, just to make mm -hmm. sure that they do. Um, I'm pretty sure they have a, they will use a freight forwarding service, but, um, but again, call and check because... Sometimes there's countries that just they will not ship to right. because of customs. Yeah. Um, and I know it's like the bigger the company, the more restrictions they place on them as far as shipping. Because like there's some small independent little scrapbook stores. They can ship wherever they want because nobody's going to give them a hard time about it. All right. So for colored pencils, we're going to begin on the weeds because I think that's a little bit less intimidating if you're not familiar with this technique. And basically, all we're doing is adding a little bit of, uh, of just shadow here and there. So these are the, and you can use whatever colored pencils you have. It does not matter. Um, the thing that's interesting about these is that they're, they're a wax-based pencil, but they're not very waxy. So if you can, I'm just going to stop talking for a second, and you're going to hear this, the coloring here. See, it's very scratchy sounding, partly because of how rough my paper is, and partly because this is a very dry pencil. It has a lot of pigment in it. I'm not pressing very hard. Um, but it definitely is not going to feel like a polychromos or a Prismacolor um, or a color soft. It's it's a it's mostly pigment, a little bit of wax, and that's it. So what gives a pencil the creamy feeling is the, is the um, the medium, whether it's oil or wax or combination of the two, that gives it that nice you know kind of silky feeling. Um, but the downside to that is when you start coloring and you start layering, you'll get what's called bloom on your paper, especially with the, your wax pencils. And that's basically all the wax is, is um, being forced in the paper and the paper can't take it. So it rises up and you get this haze on the top of your paper and you can buff that off. But sometimes you get this like kind of reflective surface because of it. So, um, so this is a nice option for that, but it makes a scratchy sound. And I know some of you guys cannot stand the scratchy sound. And I just wanted you to hear that in case you know, you hear that and you realize, oh, I can't deal with that. I don't want to get those pencils. Or you could realize, well, it doesn't bother me that bad. I'll try it. But it always sounds a little bit more, uh, a little bit stronger on a microphone than it does in real life. So if it, bother, if it doesn't bother you hearing it like that, then it probably won't. But um, that way you'll know. And I'm just adding a little bit of yellow ochre. Now, if I wanted to blend this out, I would need to use a solvent such as um, Gamzol, Mineral Spirits, paint thinner, turpentine, something like that. Um, and But just be aware that we're working on paper and any of those solvents could potentially uh, damage your paper. So, I mean, eventually, not like, you know, the next year, but, you know, eventually it could. Okay, and that's all I'm really going to do for that to that for right now. And now I'm going to go on to the fish, and I'm going to start in with the shadows. And I'm going to start in with indigo. And I'm going to get the eye nice and dark. And I'm also going to go around the eye, underneath it. I'm going to do the mouth. And kind of the bottom of the belly. And you don't have to add colored pencil. If you don't, if you like your watercolor the way it is, and you don't want to, you want to keep it 100% watercolor, then that's totally fine. This is just an option, and it's a great way if you're not happy with a watercolor to um, kind of spruce it up a bit and get that definition you might have lost. 
Um, uh, JPC thirteen art. Can you get the Soho pencils individually? Yes, you can. Yeah, that's great because then if you use up a color, um, then you can go back. Like if you use a lot, it seems like we're. I always go through white, with um, with colored pencils and indigo and terracotta. Those are those are my colors because I I don't like to use black, but I love to use indigo and terracotta together for a shadow because they just look nice and rich. Uh, Georgia Rose Greer, how many pencils are in an in ink tent set? 72 is the is the max. That's the biggest set you're going to get. And I, I have this set of 72. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and as the thing with the, like the ink tent sets, and I think probably with Soho, most of your artist quality pencils, your set of 12, your basic colors, if then you went and bought the set of 24, those 12 would be repeated. Those 24 would be in the set of 36. Those 36 would be in the set of 72. So you're going to have duplicates. So I would think carefully, maybe buy a couple pencils open stock or a few brands and then decide what you want. Then buy the biggest set that you want because they're cheaper by the set. But if you start off with a small set, you're going to end up getting duplicates. Um, and those may or may not be colors that you end up using a lot of. So just so you don't with duplicates that you're not going to use. I'm going in with some magenta, just adding some some kind of streaks and go with the shape of your fin. So the fin's kind of like fanning out. So just keep that in mind as you go and you add your strokes of color. Uh, Alex Payton, how do you get yourself noticed as a young artist? Uh, she is in grade nine. Um, the best advice I would say is, um, you can post your art to social media, but I would go into like places you hang out, like your local coffee shops, bakeries, any place that you would, that you would, um, hang out and probably spend money. I would, um, I would stop those pl at those places and ask if you can hang your work. Now you'll be expected to frame it nicely. So it looks good in their locale, but, um, but I would do that. That's how I started. And, um, I ended up making sales too, because when people can see your work, in person, they're much more likely to buy it than over the internet. I'm going in with some, um, this is Thalo Turquoise. It's about a perfect match for what we just used in the Turner palette. Uh, Jose Lopez, is it possible to sell finished painting on cellulose paper like Strathmore 400 or Canson Montville? Oh, sure. Oh, I definitely think so. I mean, both of those are acid-free papers. They are, they're, they're wood-based, but they're still acid-free. Uh, Susanna Paul, what's the difference between the Albrecht Durr and the Aqua, Aqua Faber-Castell watercolor pencils? The Albrecht Drewer are, um, they're oh, nice. Say it wrong? Oh, that's our, I might be saying it wrong. Who knows? Yeah. Um, they're, the uh, regular, like, Faber-Castell art grips are more of a student quality, the uh, Albright Drawer are an amazing artist quality pencil that are just, they're, they're like the ink tents. You don't need the, the Albright Drawers and the ink tents because they're so similar, but they're, they're, they're excellent. They're, there's no comparison between like the, the Faber-Castell art grips and the, um, and the Albright Drawer ones or the Design Memory Craft Faber-Castell and the Albright Drawer. They're just in a, in a class by themselves. I can't recommend them enough. But that, that said, I had the ink tents already, and I had the uh, Derwent, stu uh, regular Derwent watercolor pencils, and those two sets combined equaled like the set of 20 Albright drawers, so just keep that in mind if you're, if you're buying that you're not just duplicating something you already have. Now with the white pencil, I'm going to go in and add um, that little highlight under the eye, and I'm also going to go in and add some shine to the bubbles. Uh, NK Nana 3, have you ever used gum Arabic? Yep, I have. Like if I'm going to use Perlex, which is a mica powder with my paints, gum Arabic to it is the same binder that watercolor uses, and it'll make it stick to the paper because Perlex doesn't have a binder on its own. Um, and I have used it to increase the gloss and transparency of my color, especially if I'm using like a student grade paint, it will help it perform more like an artist grade paint. And I, I recommend buying the, um, the gum Arabic that's in the liquid form because you can buy it in the powder form and add water to it, but that tends to mold and you can't really keep it. I'm not sure if it's something with the water or something with the powdered gum Arabic that it's not meant to be stored. But um, I know the Da Vinci brand of gum Arabic, is they sell it in fairly big bottles and it's quite affordable. Um, and Da Vinci is a good paint as well. Um, if that's another, that's another one that I'd recommend.
comes in larger tubes if you teach classes it's very uh, very economical all right I'm just looking at my finished piece and it looks like I did a little more detail around the face so I'm gonna do a white highlight at the bottom of the of the body head here because it's kind of foreshortened so you kind of miss the body is kind of hidden behind the the head there and I think I want a little stronger white Uh, Serena Griffith, do you not recommend shadowing with black at all? And if so, why? I personally don't recommend it. Uh, you can do whatever you want, and it's just going to give you a different effect. Shadowing with black is going to give you um, more of a cartoony look. It's it's a dead it's a more dead color, and you, the pigments that you can make a black paint using the colors on your palette, and you'll get a more vibrant natural color. So. Like, um, so for this fish, if I wanted a really dark black, I could take the, like that darkest blue and I could take that magenta and I could add a little touch of yellow to it and make a nice black that actually goes with everything that I'm using here. Or I could make a brown with the magenta and the green. And by using colors that are already on my palette, I'm going to have a much nicer, natural, more harmonious look. If I just mix black with it, um, it'd look more cartoony. Um, because it wouldn't really go with it and it'd have too much contrast with you know with what I had going here but if what you're looking for is more of like a pop art where you're looking for some really strong contrast and you want things to feel a little discordant like maybe that's your your art is a political statement and you want it to feel discordant using black will give you a discordant feel so it just depends on what you're what you're after um, but since I paint a, in a little bit more of a impressionistic style um, I want more harmony in my work. My work isn't political. Um, it's fun art, not fine art, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so I want it to have harmony. And I, and I personally like the, like the look of not using black. But they make black. People buy black. If you want to use black, use black. But that's, that's the reason why I don't. And if you want an extra bit of high highlight anywhere, you can actually use your white from the tube. And I know this Turner set of 18 what? has white. We're using white? If you, if you want. So this Whoa. is. That's, Whoa. I know, we're I know. We're washing today. We're gouaching. Washing. We're gouaching. <laughs> and we're gouaching. <laughs> and we're gouaching, gouaching, gouaching. And it's really, it's really nice for the, for the bubbles. Um, Alex Payton. How do you get a lot of color off of your pencil? I have the Kimberly brand. Um, well, there's a couple different ways. You can um, color in pretty darkly with it and then add water, or you can just wet your brush and lift it off the tip. Different um, pencils will have different am amounts of pigment in them, so you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but I believe the Kimberly's are pretty good. Um, I, would just, I would just kind of experiment with taking the tip of your brush and lifting off color and see how you do there. You can also, if you want a super dark line, like after you've, uh, say you've done the fish and the fish is still wet and you want some really dark details, you could take the dry pencil and just draw right into the wet paper and you're gonna get super, super dark lines. Keep in mind that you're not gonna be able to lift those lines back up because they're gonna kind of indent and scribe the paper. But, um, but if you want a little accent like the pupil of the fish or something like that, you're gonna get that effect that way. Now, at this point, some of you might want to turn around, uh, turn away because I'm going to splatter my painting. And I know some people really do not like that because they're not shy about telling me that they don't like that. So I'm just giving you some warning that that's going to happen right now. And if that disturbs you, then, <laughs> then you might not want to watch. But I like turn it. Turn away. Turn away. Especially it's, it's underwater. It's, you know. Yeah. I like it. There's bubbles and pieces of food floating around and Oh yeah, that's right. Get the plant or whatever else you got in there. Hopefully I don't hit the uh <laughs> the camera with it. There's some yellow ochre in there. Any color that you've already used. It's also a great way to tie in colors, like especially if you added one after your background and you don't really have it going anywhere else. And your um natural brush uh your natural hair brushes or your natural synthetics, the ones that are meant to copy a, uh, a natural hairbrush will hold more paint and splatter better. So that's why I'm using this and not the cat's tongue. And there, after that's dry, you can go ahead and sign your name. And I decided to sign my name with a colored pencil because it was a little bit easier. And you see, once it dries, the splatter is really not that noticeable. Um, 
But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Do we have any last questions before we sign off, Sarah? Um, I don't think so. I think we're all caught up. Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining us today. There's a full list in the video description. Um, if you haven't signed up to win my class at Craftsy yet, it's you got only a couple days left to do so. The link is in the video description. Go on over there, sign up. It's free. Well, the the chance to win is for free. Obviously, I'll be the class will be for sale in a little while. How but, much um, is the class? Um, I can't say for sure yet okay. actually I don't I don't know myself for sure until launch day but um, but sign up for a chance to win anyway and also I want to thank Jerry's Artorama.com for sponsoring this video today you can find all the supplies I use today as well as all of your favorite brands at Jerry's Artorama.com thank you for watching and until next time happy crafting Hello. Yay.